All right, so I'm going to do a, a map of Donald Trump's face here from front view to side view. This is to get realistic proportions. And this will help me better understand my character's kind of version. So the first thing I need to map front and side is the cranium shape. The cranium shape realistically for humans is circular. And it's a sphere. It's like the fishbowl that goes around the brain. And that's very helpful for character designers because from <coughs> any angle, it's always a circle. So that's usually the first thing you draw whenever you are going to draw a character or a person, no matter what angle they're, they're in. But from the front, I'm going to split the head in half this way, right down the middle, a bisymmetrical line. And you can see that his mandible, which is like a little mask that goes underneath the cranium, is pretty broad at the bottom. He's a little jowly, right? He's got flesh hanging off of his, his jawbone there. But that is a very different shape than when I show that mandible from the side. From the side, it hooks up like this. So without the reference, you can see that the front view doesn't really look a lot like the side view. So as a cartoonist or as a character designer, my job is to try to make them feel similar. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to cut them in half. So if I go from this top portion to this bottom portion and go halfway, that should line up with the eyes, and it does, right, on realistic proportions. Now it's the center of the eyeball. So you have to realize that the eye that we see is covered up by a lot of skin. But the actual eyeball is like a ping pong ball floating in the skull like that. And if I take away the reference, it starts to look a little like C-3PO. Right? That's because the eyeball is the same size in everyone's skull. And the ocular cavities, the space for the eyeball, is always spaced the same way. There are five of those eyeball spaces across the head. So one, two, three, four, five. And that maps out in realistic proportions exactly where you should expect the eyes to happen. Now individual eyes look very different from each other, but they will always happen realistically in that spot. Center of the head, five across, one eye width in between the eyes. His hair is just a little poofy on that side. That's why I have to shorten this one up a little. Okay. Next, the nose. The nose, the nasal cavity, will always fit right underneath and in between within that center eye width because the actual cavity for the nose and the skull looks like this. That's the hole that's punched in the skull. And then the eye cavities kind of look like this in the skull. That help where the ping pong ball sits to give it all the flexibility to the muscles. So you will always know where the openings in the nose are. But what does that mean for drawing? It means you draw kind of a straight line down. I usually do a dotted line. And then where does the nose end in realistic proportions? This is different than my character design. You go from the eye line to the bottom of the chin, right? And then halfway down, that's the bottom of the nose. It's not necessarily the, um, the point of the nose, right? but it's where the nose touches back to the face because that's where the nasal cavity is. So you can have an upturned nose, a downturned nose, but wherever that nose touches back to the face at the back end of the nostrils is going to be halfway between the eye line and the chin line. You can see that there. Okay, how wide is the nose? Usually the nostrils, I mean, nostrils can flare and some, some skin is thicker than other skin on certain faces. And that might have to do with that, with 
racial characteristics. Um, it might have to do with just the expressions that person always makes and the way their face, face is flexible. But in general, the nose will, even with the nostril thickness, will always fit in that, that rectangle between the eyes. And that does work for Donald Trump as well, right? Now from the side view, you might have to show that upturned or downturned. He has a slightly upturned nose and it's sloped like that. And that's completely unique to him. But you'll see the edge of his eye is here. If I draw that ping pong ball, that's where his, his eye is. It's about half of an eye width from the front, right? To see it from the side. And then it's another two eye widths back to his ear. So speaking of ears, the ears fit between the eye line and the nose line, but then this is an age characteristic because the ears are cartilage. They never stop growing. So both the nose and the ears, which are mostly cartilage, never stop growing. But the nose will always be contained in this box as a character ages, it will just bulge out further and further from the face. As the ears grow, they will grow out further and further above and below the eye line and the nose line. Now, Donald Trump here is slightly tilting his head down. And the only way I can tell that is his ear is a little bit above the nose line. But if I'm just doing a straight on character view, I'm going to lower his ear a little bit and raise it just above the eye line and just below because that's what he looks like looking straight on. Again, this is just a map. Help me understand where realistic templates or facial features go. Now it gets a little bit trickier for the mouth. For the mouth, you take this bottom quarter from the nose line to the chin line and you split it into thirds. And they should be even thirds. like so, equal spaces. I'm going to carry those over to the side as well, <coughs> equal thirds. So that top third, that is the separation. If the face is relaxed, like it is here, that is the separation between the upper and lower lip. So it's where the, the two lips deviate from each other. The bottom third line, that is what, what I call the, um, that's actually usually what I call the chin line. <laughs> this is the jaw line. So this is where, and you can feel it on your own face, it's where a little lump of flesh is tacked back to the skull. And so it's that little divot underneath your lower lip. And you can see it in the photos right there. Now it's easier to see in the side view. Let me change color here. So basically you have to draw your upper lip above that first line, your lower lip underneath it, but then it has to tack back to your chin marker and then the chin bulges out from there, right? So from the front, the difficulty is how do you know how wide the mouth is? And this is the trick. I'll do this with red. Portrait books and stuff will tell you drop straight down from the pupil and you'll get to the edge of the mouth when the mouth is relaxed. Problem is then your, your portrait has to be looking straight ahead and that's not always the case. So this is the method I like better. You draw a dot dead center of the face. So it's going to be right in between the eyes. Then you make a dot at each corner of your nose rectangle. And then you use kind of a ruler. And you just try to draw as straight a line as you can through those dots. It's a little difficult digitally. But you make a little triangle and you extend that triangle through the dots all the way, gosh, to the edge of the, of the skull, of the mandible. So that little triangle tells me when relaxed how wide the mouth can get. Now, when they're smiling or something, this is the little coat hanger that happens. And when they smile, it will tug at this point and that will move up slightly. And then it will tug obviously at that point and that will move up. 
and then it will go down. So then the line can look more like that, and the mouth can widen. But that takes musculature, right? And that's an expressive thing we can play with. So now that I know how wide the mouth is, roughly from here to here, I can draw the lips, or I know where the lips are going to appear. All right, so now we have to deal with the top of the head. So I'm going to go from the eye line, the center eye line, and I'm going to divide the top half of the head into thirds. So again, equal spaces. This is what you look for. I'm going to do that on the side view as well. And this place here I call the brow. And this I call the, the default hairline. All right. So what do we see? Well, we see that Donald Trump has these big bushy eyebrows. He's got all this musculature in his forehead. But at that point, you can feel it on your own forehead. That's where our, our skull is a little spiky and it tacks back. And you will usually have a little crease or some sort of marker there. And whenever we show a lot of expression in our forehead with our eyebrows, that's the place that's going to stay calm, but it will kind of wrinkle around and away from that point. Like you see all of these brow creases, that's the brow line right there that they radiate from. The hairline, he has bangs that are covering up his hairline. His hairline is mysterious. We don't really know what his hairline is. But luckily, this side view, it shows the wind. It shows that his hair is attaching to his skull about right there, which is actually what you would expect. Right. So that's a good default hairline where you can start. The last thing we can map is the neck. Now from the side, you can see the neck's pretty complicated because it's covering up the spinal column at the back and it's attached to the chin, sometimes in a very weak way, sometimes in a very strong outlined way from the front. So from the side, the neck can be a variety of thicknesses. Um, but from the front, it always comes from the bottom of the ears and arches down. Unless you're a bodybuilder and you've built up those muscles to arch out, it usually arches down from the bottom of the ears. So there's the facial template of Donald Trump from the front. Here's the facial template of Donald Trump from the side. So now that I have a facial template that's realistic, just traced right over the photographic reference, I can start trying to understand what makes his face unique, makes what makes him recognizable. And let me uh, take the opacity down on it a little bit. So the first thing, of course, the focal point of most portraits, the thing you notice most are the eyes. So I'm go going to actually switch to black here. I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush. It's going to be a little bit more sensitive. So this is the eyeball floating in the head, but the actual eye shape is created by these drapes of fabric. that are the upper and lower eyelid. So Donald Trump's eyes, they're very kind of uh, pinched and almond-like. You're not actually seeing a whole lot of the white of his eyes at all. His pupil takes up a lot of that space. So he's basically squinting a lot and his lids are fairly heavy. So notice the lid crease there. And honestly, looking at them like, like, like this, they're kind of reptilian. And then he's got the big bowl underneath of shadow, which kind of shows you the, the bottom edge of that ping pong ball eyeball. Oh, I'm drawing on the wrong layer. Let me lock that so I don't make that mistake again. So everyone's eyes look very particular, right? So it's good to 